One of the surprise hits in what turned out to be a pretty bleak year for cinema had to be Sound of Freedom, a movie that sat languishing on a shelf at Disney for almost five years before finally getting bought over by Angel Studios. And damn man, talk about a good investment. The film ended up grossing $250 million worldwide, which is more than most Marvel movies bring in these days. And in the process, it turned Angel Studios from a little known production company into a major player to rival some of the big studios in Hollywood. The only question was, what the hell were they going to do next? Well, the answer came a few weeks ago in the shape of Cabrini, a historical biopic about an Italian nun and her efforts to help orphan children in turn-of-the-century New York while battling against local politicians, corruption, violence and even her own superiors in the church. With a budget of $50 million and a story that addresses many of the same themes as Sound of Freedom, it's pretty obvious they were hoping to replicate some of the success of their breakthrough hits. But is it any good? Well, mostly yes. It's not the kind of movie I'd normally go in for, and the period setting isn't likely to appeal to everyone, but overall I think it manages to tell a solid, confidently shot, if slightly predictable story that rarely becomes preachy or condescending, with a capable cast of veteran actors and a compelling protagonist that's easy to root for. In short, it's a pretty standard biopic that doesn't stray too far from the road well travelled, but strides down it with enough confidence and flair to keep you invested until the end. The movie kicks off in Italy where Cabrini is petitioning the Vatican to be allowed to fund a missionary order in China to help orphan children. She's already been turned down a bunch of times before because women have never taken on foreign missionary work like that and nobody thinks that she can do it. But an impassioned speech to the Pope finally wins her some support, only she's not going to China. Instead she's being sent to New York to help Italian immigrants in the Five Points district. New York turns out to be a squalid, crime infested shithole. Nice to see that some things never change. <laughs> and Cabrini and her followers don't exactly get a warm welcome when they arrive. Anti-Italian sentiment is running high, local politicians want nothing to do with them, and the press and public are happy to turn a blind eye to their problems. So the movie really becomes about her battle to win people over to her cause, her efforts to help the lost souls that she comes across, and her single-minded determination to get things done. But as problems and opposition mount, her funding runs out and her physical health begins to decline, she starts to question whether the task is beyond her and whether her actions are motivated as much by ego and legacy as faith and compassion. I said earlier that there's some pretty interesting comparisons to be drawn between this movie and Sound of Freedom, both in terms of emotional tone and the overall theme of an idealistic individual going above and beyond to help those in need. And because of that, Cabrini is best seen as a slightly cautious and safe follow-up to its predecessor. I mean, that's not to say it's a bad film. In fact, in in a lot of ways it's exactly the kind of earnest, feel-good story that we could probably use more of these days. And there's some genuinely hard-hitting moments when you come face to face with the reality of what people lived through back then, but for obvious reasons it's never going to be quite as emotive as what you saw in Sound of Freedom. All the usual hallmarks of a film like this are present and correct, the idealistic lead determined to get things done in the face of apathetic superiors, the sinister antagonist pulling strings to make them fail, the major setback that triggers a crisis of confidence and a dramatic low point, and the impassioned speech that finally wins people over. All the reassuring elements you'd expect are in there, and the film's none the worse for them. Not every movie needs to reinvent the fucking wheel. The cast is generally strong, and there are a couple of impressively big names involved. David Morse and John Lithgow are old veterans that are always entertaining to watch. Lithgow in particular shines as the corrupt and prejudiced mayor, and Christina Del Anna turns in a strong performance as Cabrini herself. A woman with single mind determination to get things done, who never comes across as a typical overbearing Hollywood girl boss. In fact, she's wrestling with some very real physical shortcomings in the shape of a debilitating lung disease that threatens to cripple her. Her strength instead lies in her perseverance, her commitment, and her refusal to quit that gradually earns respect and admiration from those around her, instead of just shouting people down and dominating every situation she's put in. Production design and directing are both strong, recreating 1890s New York is no small task for any film, but the movie makes the most of its $50 million budget with an effective combination of period details and CGI, and generally, it looks pretty convincing. Pacing-wise, it's mostly fine. You could probably shave 10 or 15 minutes off the runtime just to tighten up a bit in places, but let's be honest, historical biopics aren't exactly roller coaster rides, so it doesn't bog the film down too much. Ultimately, despite a few little niggles, I think Cabrini comes across as a confident, assured movie that looks and feels way better than you'd expect 
right from a studio that's just starting out. The script doesn't take too many risks from a creative standpoint, but instead sticks to a tried and tested approach and so never drops the ball either. And if you're looking for a solid, well-crafted historical drama that sheds light on a pretty remarkable woman, well, Cabrini might just be the film for you. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.